So if people start coming in, if people start coming in, we'll just give it a few minutes to get people settled in front of their computers. Welcome to everyone who's here already. We're just gonna give it just a few more seconds to get more friends ready for the event. Thank you all for being here today. All right, I think we're gonna get started. Hi everyone, and welcome to PNP Live. My name is Heidi and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator at Politics and Prose. Thank you for joining us and tuning into this virtual format where we continue to bring authors and new books to you. I have the pleasure of hosting our event this morning and I'm delighted to welcome our guests, Dame Liu and Lynn Scurfield. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. You can click the link that we're gonna drop into the chat box to get your own copy of Friends Are Friends Forever. And just to let you know, we do have some really great book plates available as well. So that'll be along with your purchase if you get the book today. Uh, if you have questions for our guests, you can click the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and add one there. If you're joining us from school, please add your first name, your grade, and the name of your school. And just a quick reminder that the chat box has, chat box has been disabled. Please only use the Q&A section for questions for Dane and Lynn. At the end of the presentation, our guests will have time to answer some of your questions. You can also upvote the questions you like and want most answered. Now onto the event you're waiting for. Dane Liu was born in China and spent her teenage years in the US and Canada. As a storyteller, Dane is drawn to questions about identity, family, culture, and belonging. She has been awarded by the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting, the Radio and Television Digital News Association of Canada, and We Need Diverse Books. Friends Are Friends Forever is her first picture book and based on her own immigration story. Lynn Scurfield is a mixed media illustrator based just outside of Toronto, Canada who has worked on a variety of projects in newspapers, magazines, comics, and children's publishing. Her work is defined by bold colors and textures that depict strong emotions. We are so pleased to turn the event over to them and I will see you all for Q&A. Yay, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Lynn and yes. I are so happy to be here. <laughs> yes, hello everyone. <laughs> so my name is Dean Liu and I wrote this book and I'm Lynn and I illustrated it <laughs> so before we get started on our reading uh, just a little bit about this story you know this is a story that's really close to my heart it's based on my experience of moving from one side of the world to another and um, Lynn captured this experience so beautifully and we're so excited to be here so let's get started. Lynn, should okay. I read one page and then you read the next spread? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> friends are friends forever. In our town, the winter howls, heavy flakes swarm and glaze the earth. Kish, skish, you and I slide holding on to each other. She is my neighbor and my best friend. Together we teeter and shimmy and giggle to school. Days before Lunar New Year, my parents say we're moving far away. Dan, Dan, will you come back, you ask? I kick snow, I don't know. On Lunar New Year's Eve, the grown-ups bustle, their faces swallowed by steam. Crunchy vegetables skid around the walk. Flame-red chilies speckle silky noodles. Batches of dumplings jiggle in boiling water. Nai Nai fishes us our dumplings. Eat more tonight, she wipes her eyes with the, co with the corner of her apron. So you never forget Nai Nai's dumplings. We dip them in black vinegar and soy sauce. We bite into the egg and chive filling. Mmm, you licks her lips. The best, I say. Nai Nai's stories chime in my ears. Garlic and ginger tickle my nose. I close my eyes to remember everything. When the grown-ups start their card game, Yu Yu pokes me. She and I have our own New Year's Eve tradition. We pleat red papers, zigzag our scissors, 
and unfold. We sink our cutouts in water, stretch strings across the metal plates, and step carefully into the cold. Our best snowflakes yet, Yue Yue says. Am I last? My voice shivers. Hiss, boom, crack. She grabs my hand and pulls me toward the flashing fireworks. At dawn, our families sleep. Yu Yu and I race. We knock on our plates. Clonk! The circles pop out. We hang our ornaments high and proud and watch them spin and shimmer in the sunlight. I got you something, Yue Yue says. A stack of red paper, a spool of string, so you can make cutouts with a new friend in America. Yue Yue and I hug, not letting go. She whispers, friends are friends forever. No more breakfast at Grandma Ty's cart, dipping fresh crullers in hot honeyed soy milk. Here, I eat alone. No more threading through traffic, honking and hollering. Here, streets are roomy and neat. No more dreaming to the neighbors' laughter and checkmates, our courtyard lullaby. Here, nights are silent and still. I watch other kids slide, I hear them giggle, but when I come near, the circles close and I can't say anything. I race to learn a hundred words a day. Sometimes I get 10, sometimes only three. Every night I fall asleep, hugging a list and my dictionary. Winter comes, leaves fall, no snow. I tuck Yuya's gift deep under my bed. On my birthday, I wear a satin dress. My classmates snicker. You look awesome, a girl smiles. She shows me her artwork. Red's my favorite color too. Christina and I share an easel. She untangles words that my dictionary does not. We build forts and whisper our secrets. With Christina, my voice blooms. Remember this? She raises her hand. High five, I say. We clap our palms and giggle. On Lunar New Year's Eve, my parents bustle in the kitchen. We peek under my bed. What is it? Christina asks. I remember Yuya's wish and slowly take out the bundle. I show Christina how to pleat, zigzag, and unfold. Beautiful, she says, but we can't freeze them, I tell her. It's not cold here. How about the freezer, she nudges me. Great, we dunk our cutouts in cake pans and slide them in. That night, I pour black vinegar and soy sauce onto Christina's plate and rubber band her chopsticks the way I learned. We eat steaming dumplings, play cards with Mama and Baba, and laugh. At dawn, we dash to the grumbling machine and knock on the pants. Clunk! We hang our, horn our ornaments high and proud and watch them glisten and melt. I like Lunar New Year, Christina smiles. I like being your friend. Me too. I stand a little taller. Friends are friends forever. So in the author's note, um, I talk about this beautiful holiday called Lunar New Year, which is actually coming up on February 1st. So it's next week. And this is the year of the tiger. Um, like many of the holidays we celebrate, it is a time of 
great food, family and friends coming together and being with each other, spending time together. Um, I have beautiful memories from my childhood and I'm forging beautiful memories with my kids now. <laughs> Um, as you can see behind both me and Lynn, we have been doing some paper cutting. Um, you might have seen throughout the book that Lynn put in these beautiful paper cuts throughout, including some of my favorite pages that have, you know, snow and winter is a big part of this story in the beginning. And she even included these beautiful paper cut snowflakes, which I really love. <laughs> I, I, Thank what you. I, one of the things I really love about this book is how um, there are these de details that you pick up um, when you look more closely at the illustrations, you know, so with that, maybe I'll just, uh, you know, share some questions with you guys and Lynn can ask me a few questions as well, just about the bookmaking process. Um, so that might be fun. <laughs> so Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tell us, you know, once you got this story, uh, so my words, um, how do you get started with a story like this? How do you start illustrating? That's <laughs> like going back. Um, this one was fun, actually. So sometimes, depending on the book, sometimes the, the um, publisher will separate the words for you. So they will like tell you what words are on what page. But this one, I actually got the option to do that myself so I got to decide which words went on which page so it's I, I always really enjoy that part where you get to decide because you really get immersed in the story and how the story flows and then you're kind of putting your own interpretation of like where words break and where you need yeah where you need pauses where you can like put things together that makes sense so that was the first part for me. And then once you get a good flow of the, just the story and how the words are laid out on the page, you can actually start diving into like, okay, so now what I'm going to draw <laughs> for each page, like what are, I need to draw China and then I need to draw the family together. And then you can start collecting references and really getting into the sketching and moving forward with that. Yeah, I think what's really interesting is, um, you know, some people might not think about the fact that when you're illustrating, there's a lot of research involved, right? There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of research. Oh, my God. <laughs> Especially because I never grew up in China. I was born in Canada and my mom's from China. So I was going to my mom being like, Mom, what, what do things look like? <laughs> like, when a tra traditional house, are there round tables? And I was like, Googling, what do houses look like in China? <laughs> Stuff like that. Well, you're an amazing Lots researcher research. because there are so many details that really <laughs> took me back to my childhood when I looked at oh. your pictures, and I thought they were so vividly and accurately captured, you know? Um, I feel good uh, to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. I was worried. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, you know, some of my favorite details are um, and when you have the book, if you have the book with you, um, you can look at them more closely. So for example, this moped has these, you know, glove, um, like muffed hands, right? Because it's so cold, this is where you put your hands to keep them warm while you're biking around the city. And I really love how um, the buildings are, the snowflakes, just a scene on the street, you know, as the girls are walking, you see the footprints. There are just these details that, I don't say in my text, but that's where I leave room for the illustrator to co-create this book with me, right? And I think that's one of the, my really favorite things about picture books and the, the true power of a picture book is that the words tell part of the story and the pictures tell the other part of the story. And together, that's the full story. Um, so, yeah. Lynn, do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm curious to know what writing is like for a, like a kid's book because it is, I found the writing and every time I reread re this together, I'm always so amazed by the words and like even the jiggling of the dumplings brings such a vivid memory of making dumplings and boiling dumplings. It's such beautifully descriptive language, but there's so little words. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you write like that? Like, what do you, how do you write something like that? 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, this it's really interesting because a book like this um, that uh, starts with one lunar new year and ends on another lunar new year. So really it's the span of a year, right? In, in someone's life and some big changes have happened in this main character's life. Um, but really this, the text was about 600, I, I can't remember the exact number of words for the very final version, but it's, it's about 600 words, which is really not that many words. And I think that's the other really beautiful part and challenging part about writing uh, picture books is that you don't have that many words to work with. You leave room for the pictures to interpret as well, right? And you have to really use, choose powerful words. So verbs are really important. And I think, you know, all of us can think of powerful verbs. It's where you don't use as many adjectives because you're using powerful, accurate language. You know, so if you can say, for example, um, jog, you would not say run slowly, right? If you can say stroll, you wouldn't say walk, you know, um, comfortably or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to use one word that's that, that is really just pulling your reader into the scene. And when I'm writing those scenes, I want to really sink into that world, not as the storyteller and not as the writer, but as the character. So every single character that is here in this book, I walked into their life in that scene and I tried to use my senses, right? What are my senses? My eyes, what I see, my nose, my mouth, my ears. So what am I tasting, seeing, smelling, hearing, and also feeling? Because how we how we feel how we feel at that moment really decide that smell, right? The most delicious yeah. smells in the world when you're not feeling very happy, when you're really sad and feeling lonely, that smell smells differently than when you are really excited and it's your birthday party and you're feeling loved, right? The smells change even when it's the same smell. So. Um, I think it's really important when you're writing a story, when you're telling a story, to be inside that character as the character and think about your senses, think about the true feeling of that character at that moment and write based on that. And then the other part I think that's really important is to write for yourself. I think a lot of time when we're writing, we think about how people will already receive the story. But I think that's a lot of pressure on what you're writing. Uh, rather, just don't think about anyone else. Only think about sinking into that character and what that character is doing and why that character is even there. Yeah. I feel a lot of that too, actually. <laughs> As being the artist, it's really similar. A lot, yeah. of, especially the senses of like, just what was, what does this character feel? What do they see? What does everything like around them feel like? It's so important just to dive into that, that, t that time and space and then capture it, yeah. in whichever creative way you can. Yeah, and I think storytelling is, there are so many ways to tell a story, right? It's not just only through words or even only through illustrations and pictures. I think, you know, an architect tells stories through their mm -hmm. design of a building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a landscaper can tell his or her story through beautiful plants and flowers. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways we tell stories. It's not only within the pages of a book. So anyway, I think Lynn and I can talk on and on, but, <laughs> but I, think oh, I know. have um, maybe some questions. So let's move into that with Heidi. Thanks you too, Dane and Lynn. Thank you so much for sharing all those insights on your creation, just hearing the storytelling side and the illustration side. It's so nice for us who have had a chance to read the book to, to hear all those insights. So I'm excited to dive into more. Um, so friends, you have the opportunity to ask a lot of great questions about Lunar New Year, about Dane's story, about Lynn's illustrations or anything you read in the book. So we hope you'll jump on and ask some more questions, but we do have some ready to go. So we're gonna start with Sarah Pollan's question and she has a question for Dane. She wants to know, have you ever gone back to China to visit your friend that you had to leave behind? Uh, actually uh, about 
I guess now at this point, 20 years ago, <laughs> we saw each other. That's really dating me. <laughs> we were already um, um, grownups and uh, we, we saw each other actually in Canada uh, because she went to Canada to study. And it was really interesting seeing somebody with that much of a gap mm. because you've both lived such separate lives, right? But what glues you together is these beautiful uh, memories that you, you shared. And when you see that person, you're really pulled back into those beautiful moments. And I think that's what I also wanted to share with this title, Friends Are Friends Forever. It's not so much that you're with that person physically, but it's the fact that you, um, these, these experiences that you were able to um, experience together create this bond that is forever. And she is getting a copy of this book. So I'm, I'm super excited to, um, for, to hear back about that. Great. And just a quick add on to the, the, that question as well. Are you still in touch with Christina? Yes, we, we you know, I started becoming, uh, we got back in touch when I started writing this manuscript, but I didn't tell her about it because I wanted to be a surprise. And mm. she's receiving this book this week. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. It's so exciting. That's yeah, she actually said, my name is in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just a special gift. That's so nice. Um, okay, we have another question from Molly Lloyd, and she wants to know how long did it take to write and illustrate your book? So like, how did you work together to do that? And what was the process? And how long did it take? So I, I wrote my very first draft back in 2018. Um, and it took, you know, through my critique group and all the readers in my life, my own family, friends, my critique partners, uh, my mentor um, through We Need Diverse Books, and then eventually my agent, uh, Wendy Gu at Greenberger. I mean, it's just, you know, a bookmaking is such a team effort. <laughs> I, I, I want to also say that. It, there are just so many people whose names are not listed um, on, the bait, on the book itself and um, who were just so important in the making. And then when we sold it to Macmillan, the art director connected us with Lynn, you know, who, yeah. who is obviously the other half of the story. And Lynn and I did not know each other. A lot of people think that the writer gets to choose the illustrator. Um, and that may be the case in the future if I have a manuscript that I would love to work with Lynn on again. But most Oh my of gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. I'm just saying it now. I would do it. So. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to write a story according to the way she illustrates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those flowing lines. Hmm. Oh um, anytime, Dane. <laughs> anytime. Awesome. And so, uh, but yeah, in most cases, we don't, we don't choose. It's really, I think that vision of the art director and the publisher is really key because they know the pool of wonderful illustrators and who would not only make your words shine, but take the story oh, you know, to sorry. that next place. Sir, so okay. if you hear my dog, he's doing little barks. We like hearing dogs, it's all good. Okay, good. <laughs> Well, this is yeah. the question that goes along with that. Go ahead, did you wanna add more? Oh yeah, I just wanna add, I got the book, I think in February or March and then the arts due in like, I think I was due October, so. And then we had a lot of in-between because of COVID. So this book ended up, I think I worked on it for like three or four months for the art, which is usually very little time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this book, it just, COVID, COVID really did a number on timing and getting everything done, usually on the proper time. Yeah. But. Well, the end product is beautiful, so. That's all that like matters. A short amount of time. <laughs> well, this is the okay. question to go along with that. And the question is from Katie. And she wants, she says, the illustrations are beautiful. Do you have a favorite spread? Or do you have, do you Ooh. have something you could tell us about a spread, like a little insight on one of the pictures? Oh, man. I think, well, I think my favorite spread is the food one. Yeah. Um, let me, this one. I, I think this is my favorite spread. I just love it was, it's just one of those, as a, as an illustrator, as the person just drawing it, I was very proud of myself because it's like a little interesting perspective. It's not straight on. There's a little bit of like looking overhead and down, yeah. but even getting into it, it felt like 
I felt like the kids looking at this food, right? It was super exciting. And it really brought me back to like looking at dumplings and how do you create that look of good Mm. boiling dumplings. And actually for this book, because there's so much food that I like don't really know, I actually started cooking. (laughs) I went and I did some cooking. And I made, not this exactly, but I made a dish that was very similar. So if that was nice, actually make the food and then look at it while it was cooking and then be like, okay, so that's how I can make this look because I'm actually cooking it now. And <laughs> these are my hands <laughs> that I took a oh, picture of for reference. so cool. <laughs> yeah. I love so that. This, this is a really fun spread. It was like an, even just little bottles of like, you know, sauces that I own for cooking. It was just, it felt very personal, but also so fun to just look at it like a kid with fresh eyes at this magic that is cooking. Yeah. Oh, love yeah. I love the perspective on that spread. I remember when we got the, the, you know, the first sketches and I thought, wow, look at that perspective because every scene you can, you can look at it from all the directions, right? And yep. And I love the directionality of that specific scene. Um, and that's a great hand. You have a great hand there. <laughs> Thank you. I was so proud of that hand. It was good. It was really good. I also have a favorite spread and there's a story behind it. So I want to share. My spread is the very last one. And so um, Lynn had put in this wonderful picture of the two girls that signify that their friendship is long lasting, right? That she's still remembering her with this picture in her room. What I really love is the correspondence in Chinese characters. For, so this says Dandan, Dan, which is the main character's name as we know, and this says Yue Yue. So what I love about that is not only is she remembering her friend, but that their friendship is active at this, at this stage and that wink you know, that you may not notice when you read for the first time, but maybe if you have a chance to read the book for a second time or a third time, you would flip to this page and go, what is that? You know, and I think that that is yet again, the, the power of picture books. Yeah, yes. This is one of the nicest things about do, talking to authors and illustrators is you get to point out these really special things in the book that when you're reading it together, you can point out and it really just makes it very special. So thank you for sharing that. Let's see, we have a lot more questions. Uh, The next question, just because it's related to what we were just talking about is from Joyce O'Donnell. And she asks, what do you each consider a special food for celebrating Lunar New Year? So uh, Lynn, do you wanna go first? I feel like it's the same for the two of us. I think it'll be the same. Okay, we're gonna say it together in three, two, one, dumplings. Dumplings, yes. (laughs) 100% dumplings, always. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just, Probably just like so magical, though, right? Like different fillings I, in your family than mine. What do you I like? No, yeah, we usually have ground pork and then green onion, ginger, garlic. I think that's usually it. Okay, <laughs> I could be forgetting though. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ours is chives, eggs, and shrimp, and of course, oh. you know, ginger. okay, yeah. different for sure. Yeah. 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 I love that. And did you learn how to make them as kids or is it something you taught yourself as you're older? I'm so bad. <laughs> so bad at me. You know, it's, it's such a communal food, right? And I think that's the beauty yeah. of dumplings is um, the making of it. It's part of the celebration. You're together as a family, as, as a community. And um, making it alone is A, very difficult and B, not fun. So yeah. you need a you need somebody who's rolling that pin. You need the person filling it with the filling and pinching it, right? And yeah. then you have to boil it right away. You can't let it sit for too long. Mm-hmm. So I have only really made it under the supervision of my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> right? But and my friends who know more. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a community yeah. thing. And that's yeah. that's yet another beauty of this food. Yeah. 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 Nice. Awesome. Okay, we have a question from Bilal Qureshi, and he asks, uh, Dane, my question was about what you can tell us about your own story and memories of your childhood that inspired this story. Was there one image or memory that sparked the story? Mm, Great question. Um, I think the one memory I had was my first 
Christmas in America where we felt like this is a holiday where everybody was celebrating ar around us and yet it was so new to us, mm -hmm. right? Lunar New Year was something that we had celebrated every year. It's the biggest holiday in many Asian countries, including China, where I grew up. And we wanted, we, we wondered, okay, well, one day we feel like Christmas is this feeling we had for Lunar New Year. And I think eventually that one day did happen. And for me now, you know, they, they share this equal place in my heart for different reasons, mm. right? And I think that's the different, the different selves that we had as human beings. We're never one self, right? We're, we're complicated people, we're complex people. And that's what makes us interesting is that we're not one way and we're, we're, we don't come from one experience. And so the different experiences with, within me make me love Christmas and Lunar New Year for different reasons, but at the same level. And so when, when that memory of feeling like, oh, Christmas, this first Christmas, and then us celebrating that first Lunar New Year made me wanna write a story about celebrating Lunar New Year and in remembering. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I know we have a lot of teachers on, so I'm gonna to try to get to some of the teachers' questions because I think they're coming from the kids. Um, Molly Lloyd asks, asks Jaden wants to know if there's a special tea for Lunar New Year. <laughs> oh, I actually don't know. Well, you know, I always drink like 10 teas at the same time. I always have 10 jars of teas going on. I don't know if there's a particular tea just for the new year, but in my house, we always have a stable of jasmine green, right? Um, there's, there's a tea called gaba green and it's, it's really fragrant and really rich tasting. Um, so I don't know about a specific tea, but I think green is kind of what I think of. Great, thank you. Another teacher, Joyce O'Donnell, has a, a student who wants to know, could you describe Lunar New Year? Or maybe the two of you could talk about what you're maybe gonna do this year for Lunar New Year. Mm. So this year for my family, it's a very small. My, my parents won't be a part of this. And we have actually, my husband and I have actually talked about how we are going to make dumplings with our kids. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> we're going to tempt fate <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fun <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be uh having my uh, a zoom call with my mom at the same time maybe we can make dumplings at the same time together you know? oh I love so, that yeah yes. we've been thinking about that I'll, I'll be at the grocery store going wait <laughs> is this the right thing to get you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this year we're not 100% sure what's going to happen. There was some sad stuff going on with my mom's dog. So it's like very unfortunate it's all happening around Lunar New Year time. But originally we were going to, my parents work really hard and I'm super busy. So we're going to order food, <laughs> but we're going to have my stepdad's Jewish. So we we're going to have one of his sons over and then we were all going to do a Lunar New Year thing together with his family. So yeah. we'll see if it happens. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it's um, so nice to share it with other people too. That seems to be an important element of it. It is. Oh yeah. I don't know if you could do. <laughs> it's not the same if you celebrate alone. <laughs> I don't think it'd be the same. I think same. no holiday is the same when you celebrate alone, right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> Very true. Uh, just a quick comment from one of uh, Sarah Pollan's students. She said, one of my students made a connection with your book when she moved from Massachusetts. So I think it also is hitting yeah. on that for kids who are moving and having to make new friends. So hard. But, yeah. Um, you know, since the release of this book, we've heard from many different communities and the connections that people make are beyond what we expected, I think, and so heartwarming. You know, some, um, I had a, another child contact me saying that they moved here from um, an, another English speaking country, Australia, and yeah. yet they still felt this same kind of code switching and just 
you know, navigating a new community and finding that belonging, but also this, this idea of resilience, of being strong, right? How can we stay strong when things are difficult? And that is really through, you know, of course, this power inside ourselves, but also offering kindness to each other and sharing together. It's amazing how when you share, it's, it's not just the recipient who is feeling stronger, it's both mm. people, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Sarah Pollan's students, also one of her students, wants to make sure that you you made another friend after you left. She oh. wants to make sure oh. she's okay. <laughs> I have seen pictures. She has many friends, <laughs> which I am so happy about too. You know, I, I think that's that's one of my favorite spreads in the book. Um, you, the image of the two of them saying goodbye, but also just the the dialogue where she says, "I'm giving you this." because I want you to make this with a new friend in America, right? Because that's how big love yeah. is. Love is really not about holding on to that person for yourself. Yeah. It's about making sure that you are supporting that person so that they can be as loved and happy as possible. Absolutely. And even like the perspective from a grown up, like friends that you've made when you're little, sometimes when you see them again, it's like no time has passed. And so it's so nice yeah. to have those connections. Right. Yeah. That's the forever part too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a question from Daisy and she's wondering about um, how you do the paper cutting because there there's this amazing craft at the end of the book um, that, and if you could see, so could you maybe oh. talk about that and why you decided to put that in and how you illustrated that Lynn? I'll let Dane go first and talk okay. about the okay. history. <laughs> but <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I mean, I could talk. I I just followed instructions. <laughs> you know, when I look at my paper uh, snowflakes, they're very nice. But when I look at Lynn's, they're so intricate. And I think the difference is when you get them with such thin lines, that's when they become really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I make them big and I make them small. Here's one close up. Mm -hmm. And it's really fun when you can hang them. Um, I think I decided to put the snowflakes in because it's something I did as a child. It's, you know, when I was growing up, you couldn't, um, you couldn't just have the magic be there for you. You really had to create the magic of the holiday yourself, whether it is making dumplings together or through craft. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. I love that you are a part of this magic, right? In this active way. So I made a lot of snowflakes when I was young and I wanted to include it in this book because it's a really ancient folk art in China. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, China was the country that started making paper. So paper has a really special place in the culture and, um, and cutting it is just a way to connect your imagination with your hands. Mm -hmm. And it's a surprise every time you open it, even when you plan to maybe cut a heart or cut a specific design, every time you unfold and open that and spread it open, it surprises you what you've created. And I love that. Every, every time. Every mm -hmm. time. Yeah. That's yeah. So yeah. So this is the one that was hanging and I just folded it back. I did use weird paper. It's like more artist paper, but, and then I painted it red. I don't know. Oh, don't ask me that. why, but um, I like that. yeah, this is what it looked like when I cut it out pretty much just a lot of little cuts and a lot of experimenting to see yeah. what, what'll happen. And yeah, like Dane said, every time I opened them up, I had no idea what yeah. I was going to get. And I think I had to make a good, at least 10 to 15 of these. So you start getting better too. Once mm -hmm. you start making a bunch, yeah. you're like, oh, if I do, if I cut this here, it'll turn into that there. And you get really good at it. <laughs> yeah. Practice. Yeah. I love yeah. That you did it. That's neat. I also love that yeah. it, it's very, um, like it doesn't last forever, right? So you do it just for the holidays. And if you like put them in the water and put them outside, it just is so special for that time of year. It doesn't hang around forever. That's so neat. Yeah. 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 And if you look in the, uh, on the last page, we put in, like you mentioned, Heidi, a recipe for how readers can make their own snowflakes. Yeah. And also in the book, if you, um, you know, if you look at the pictures, these are actually supposed to be frozen. 
So what's really fun is if you live in a deliciously cold part of the country, you like Lynn does, <laughs> she, she lives you know, in Toronto. <laughs> so you can, you can put this into a cake pan, just like in the story, right? And um, put a string across and hang these up outside. And if you, you're, if where you live is very cold, they will last outside for, for a long time and they spin and shimmer in the light. Mm -hmm. So it's a really fun experience. That's so neat. I highly encourage it. <laughs> Same. Same. Yeah. <laughs> um, Joyce O'Donnell would like to know, will you write another book about Lunar New Year, a, potentially a sequel? Well, I do have another book coming out with the same publisher. It's not about the Lunar New Year, but it is about this food that we have been gushing about, dumplings. <laughs> dumplings. <laughs> and uh, right now, it sounds like it's coming out next year. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. exciting. I'm very excited. Um, I'm working with another unbelievable artist. So I am so grateful for this. And um, so more news on that soon, but it's about intergenerational love. Um, it's about a child learning to make this food of love and uh, mm -hmm. her community with someone else she loves. Well, that's, we look forward to it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> We just have um, one question and a comment left. So this is actually, we're, we're winding up a little bit. If anybody has any last questions they wanna ask, now is the time to jump on and ask it. Um, but Sarah Pollan's class would like to know, um, I, I know uh, Lynn, we talked about you living in Toronto, but her students are interested, um, Dane, in where you live now. Oh, okay. So I live on the West Coast in a city called Portland, Oregon. It is not a place, you know, we, we try to freeze snowflakes. We, we did freeze them in our freezer. <laughs> and then we pulled them out and uh, hung them around our yard. But very quickly, it either melted in the sunshine, um, like in the book, or it melted in the rain. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, but it's a deliciously beautiful place uh, here on the West Coast, you know, lots of big trees. Um, like a like a bit like a rainforest, temperate rainforest. Nice, nice. Well, you know, it's supposed to be cold in the DC area this weekend, so hopefully everybody is watching. We'll be able to jump on and um, you know do some of the crafts and hang them outside, and maybe have some dumplings for for New Year's next week. So yes. um, yeah. <laughs> and if you do share them with politics and pros, share yes. them with us. We would love to see yes. you know, what you create with your hands and your imagination yes. too. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Yes, you're getting huge shout outs from the school. So thank you very much. Um, teachers are saying thank you for being here and sharing this. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank oh, you thank so you for that. having us. <laughs> and thank you to all the students for being with us. Thank you for reading. Thank it, you. It really is so wonderful for us to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for all the great questions. Thanks to everyone joining us today. I hope you continue following politics and prose. And I hope you have a wonderful Lunar New Year. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you.